Hey guys, the, the sermon recap is going to be a little bit longer than normal. It's about seven minutes today, but it needs to be to make sure we catch the content and the thread of the message, not threat, thread of the message. And um, so I'm, I'm inviting you as you watch it, just remember it's about seven minutes long. Check it out. Well, friends, welcome to Sermon Based Small Groups. We're so glad you're connecting with these, and I hope these, uh, these you know, times together are not only growing you in your faith, but in your community that you've established in these groups. So welcome. Here we go. We're going to get started with the, the, kind of the sermon recap here. Um, so this past week, we talked about knowing your roots. And um, Erica had, been, uh, had done that Ancestry.com thing where she got her DNA and they tested it. And um, it was funny because it didn't have the things she thought would be there. She thought she grew up from, a, from Polish descent. with a, Her dad's 100% Dutch. And uh, what came back was she's 69, or 64% Dutch and Belgian, kind of the Western European lowlands. Then 29% uh, Scandinavian, which she had no idea. So at least the Olympics have been better for her because, you know, Norway and Sweden are dominating. The Germans are doing pretty good too. So um, she, you know, she didn't know that was there. Then there's 9% British and only 4% Eastern European, probably more Czechoslovakian than Polish. And she's like, whoa, wait a minute. It's, that's not what I was told who I am. When we talk today, what we have to do is really look at and understand the fact that we as the people of God, it's not always been the way it is right now. We live in the Christ era, after Christ's, Christ's life, death, and resurrection. So I want to look back real quick and talk about what it was like before. Because before Christ came, there was the lineage of God's people. Abraham, remember? Father Abraham, many sons. We had that. And he, the lineage of Abraham, the, the children of Abraham, the sons of Israel, were the, were the people of God. So if you were genetically by bloodline related to them, you were in the family of God. If you weren't, you were a Gentile. And you might be like, dude, what's a Gentile? Right? I mean, do they make it a Gentex for floors? You just don't understand. I get it. Um, a Gentile is kind of a Christian word. It's a biblical word, which means anybody who's not in the bloodline of Abraham, anybody who's not Hebrew or Jewish, they were outside the family of God. So when we look today, what I want to do is remind you that for most of us in Christianity, we like this much of the Bible. We like this, the New Testament, Matthew through Revelation. But we also need to understand back here, there's a lot in this that fuels our understanding of who Christ is and what he came to do. Because God's covenant people, the Hebrews, were the primary means by which God not only revealed himself through their living and through the law and through the prophets, but he also brought a physical lineage, a bloodline of Christ to come through. So um, we understand that you should be involved in this and reading this because the Old Testament speaks. It has books that are uh, historically based, like the book of Esther. It tells a story of God's people being saved. The book of Psalms is all these Psalms that are poems and worship songs for the people of God. So we understand there's the books of the law, the first five books books of the Bible, the Pentateuch. There's prophets, major, the, the books of uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. Um, those are the major prophets. And then there's the, the minor prophets from Hosea really down to Micah. And those are the minor prophets. And they're speaking, they're, they're telling the story of what God was speaking to his people during their historical existence. So we know that this book, this, this what's called the Hebrew Bible, is part of our canon of Scripture and we hold on to it because there was a time when we were on the outside. There was an actual physical wall in the temple in Jerusalem that restricted Gentiles, you and I, unless you're a Hebrew, that restricted us from getting into the court of Israel. And um, for us, it's important to recognize that the Old Testament reveals God and, and there's some clear ways that we couldn't come close. But in Christ, Paul says that he tore down the wall of hostility. The things that kept us from not only being able to get into the temple, but it restricted the, the Gentiles from getting to the place where the Jews could go. Think of the Brandenburg Gate in East Berlin, like circa 1982. You couldn't get through to the Soviet side 
That's the way it was. There was a wall of hostility, but there was also a wall between us and God, a wall of hostility of sin. And Jesus Christ broke down that wall. Jesus Christ made the break through that. And the reason scripture with all these different books and authors is one book, the Bible is one book, is because we know that the story is the same throughout. God is threading together the same story. And the story is the promise of redemption of God's people in the Old Testament and the fulfillment of his promises to his people and all of us, the Gentiles in the New Testament. So for us, we recognize we've been grafted in. If you're a tree person, you know you can cut off a branch of an apple tree and splice it open and stick a cherry tree branch into that and kind of tie it off with some twine. Over time, that cherry tree branch will attach to the apple tree and grow cherries. It'll be fruitful in its own way off of that apple tree. And we are like that. We have been, as Gentiles, been grafted into the family of God and we are being fruitful and living out the fact that there is no wall of hostility. There is nothing that keeps us from that. So there's this new temple. Remember the temple had the wall, the Brandenburg Gate? Not anymore. Christ has torn that down. So the best way to say it is it's like Erica's ancestry. She didn't find any Hebrew blood there, but it doesn't matter. She's part of the people of God because of the work of Christ. Because of what Christ did, she's in his bloodline. And she is bought with the blood of Christ, like you are, like I am, we recognize the new temple is our lives. And the way we live in this is really, let's apply it in two ways. The Old Testament is as much your Bible as it is as the New Testament is. Be in this. I invite you to read the book of Psalms. Start at Psalm 1. It's beautiful. You'll love it. Psalm 1, all the way through the very end. It's a beautiful story of prayer, lament, praise, joy. It's all these things. Confession. But then... Understand that in getting into the Old Testament, knowing that there is no dividing wall. This is your scripture too. You also need to not put up walls in your life to say who can and can't come to faith. Your life is the living temple of God. Go and do what Christ did for you. Open it up to all comers and share the gospel with all that you meet and be the living temple of God. The old temple had walls. Christ tore them down. The new temple has no walls. Go and live faithfully with that. So we have some questions for you, and I know sometimes my voice can be a little bit droning, so why don't we change it up a little? I'll sing the question. Have you ever felt sad to be left out or cut out of something? That was awful, but I'm standing by it. Yeah, answer that question, and then your facilitator will ask you some follow-ups. I apologize for singing the last thing. Erica's right here and she looks a little sad, but kind of happy too. And Kyle's just laughing. All right, question number two. What has been your perception of the Old Testament? How would you describe how you viewed the Old Testament? What would you say binds the Old and the New Testament together into one canon of Scripture. Question number four. What was your first reaction when we started calling you names and we're like, you're a Gentile? How do you feel being a Gentile? Do me a favor, have someone um, read the scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16. Keep that in there. That's awesome. Oh, you better have blessed me. All right. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, for all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The New Testament gospels and all of Paul's letters to the churches in Timothy were not yet assembled into what we know as the canon of Scripture. 
So what is Paul referring to when he said scripture? That's a good question. You should answer that. Uh, question number six. How did Paul describe the temple in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22? Read that, see if you can see the answer. <laughs> 